The digestive system is actually a pretty fascinating organ system because it has so many moving parts um, and it is able to convert this big hunk of meat or vegetable or whatever it is we're eating into stuff that our body can use into tiny, tiny little building blocks. So let's see how this works. Digestion is going to start right away. As soon as we start chewing our food, our saliva is going to be the first to break it down. And if you've seen my immune system video, you know it's got antibacterial components to make sure that our food starts getting um, starts getting disinfected. But it also has something called amylase, and salivary amylase functions to break down big polysaccharides into smaller units. Not quite into monosaccharides yet, but it starts the process going. From the mouth, our food is going to move into the esophagus. And if you've watched the respiratory system video, you know that uh, there's this flap called the epiglottis and it covers basically either your trachea or your esophagus, depending on what you're doing. If you're breathing, it's covering your esophagus. If you're eating, it's covering your trachea. So you swallow and your food does not go down into your lungs. It goes through your esophagus or your food pipe. And it's going to go through your esophagus into your stomach. And here's where the really interesting stuff starts to happen. So your stomach, your stomach is really acidic and that functions to start breaking things down. Acid is a catalyst for hydrolysis and it's going to be secreted by these cells called parietal cells. So parietal cells secrete hydrochloric acid and make this really acidic environment and there are also these cells called chief cells and chief cells are going to secrete pepsinogen and anytime you hear like something gen it's a precursor so when we talk about like angiotensinogen or pepsinogen or trypsinogen those are all precursors to the actual thing so this pepsinogen is going to get converted to pepsin once it's outside of the cell and that's how it doesn't destroy everything in the cell is because it's secreted in this inactive form. And what pepsin does is it breaks down, it starts to break down proteins. So pepsinogen is gonna be activated partially by already active pepsin and partially uh, also HCL plays a role. There are also these cells called mucus cells and mucus cells secrete mucus, big surprise. And this is going to keep, um, it's gonna keep this corrosive mixture that we're making for the stomach from actually corroding the cells that make up the stomach. It's only going to digest the food because of that layer of mucus. And the way this stuff is organized is in these things called gastric glands. And you can see the structure on the left, how they're kind of burrowed down in these little pits. So from the stomach, the food is going to pass through something called the pyloric sphincter, which is like this opening that can open and close between the stomach and the small intestine. And that's where the food's heading next is the small intestine. And this pyloric sphincter is gonna open and close uh, based on something called peristalsis, which is this smooth muscle involuntary movement that propels food all the way through the stomach, um, through the digestive tract, the whole thing. So the small intestine is the center for nutrient absorption so here is where we're going to start to take all the stuff that got broken down in the stomach, break it down a bit more, and absorb all the good stuff that our body needs. So coming out of the stomach, this mixture that we now call chyme is going to be very acidic. So the small intestine is going to secrete bicarbonate, which is a base, and kind of balance that out. Actually, it's not the small intestine that does that secreting, it's the pancreas. So a lot of the stuff in the small intestine, although the intestine itself does secrete some stuff, a lot of the stuff that is going to be breaking down the chyme is going to come from either the pancreas with its exocrine function. So its endocrine function is glucose homeostasis, which I want to do a whole other video on that. Uh, but its exocrine function is secreting all these enzymes that are going to break things down. or things are gonna come from the bile. And the bile is stored in the gallbladder, made in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and that's going to be important in fat digestion, which we'll talk about more in detail. The small intestine is organized for maximum absorption. So it's got these projections called villi that increase the surface area. And if you go even, even closer in, 
you can see that the cells each have these little projections and those are called microvilli and they're maintained by the intermediate filaments of the cytoskeleton. And this is going to help with maximum absorption because you've got a really big surface area to volume ratio. So I talked a little bit about how the pancreas is going to secrete a lot of enzymes. These enzymes are going to include proteases, uh, nucleases, things to break down uh, carbohydrates. So it also secretes amylase. So there's salivary amylase and pancreatic amylase. There's a bunch of enzymes and you don't have to know all their names. They're tabulated, not here, over here. There's a nice little figure with all the names of all the different enzymes. You don't have to memorize their names, but if you hear them, you should know what they do. So like if I tell you that the pancreas secretes aminopeptidase, you should know that that breaks down peptides, which are little chunks of protein, and that it does so at the end terminus where the amino group is. So most of these nutrients, the amino acids, the sugars, the nucleotides, they're all going to get absorbed by the cells of the intestine and they're going to go into the blood circulation. But fats are weird. The digestion of fats has to do with bile salts. So all the enzymes we've been talking about came from the pancreas. These bile salts are going to be made by the liver and they're gonna be stored in the gallbladder until the gallbladder is ready to release them. And when they get released from the gallbladder, they're going to break down these big globs of fat that are coming in uh, with the chyme. And they're going to break them down to more manageable components. Then lipases are going to come in and lipase, lip, lipid, Ace, breaking down. These enzymes are going to break down the fats into, into fatty acids and into monoglycerides. And monoglycerides are like triglycerides, only they only have one fatty acid hanging off that glycerol. So these components are easier to absorb into the cell. And once inside the cell, the cell will put them together again. And this seems really backwards, but they're going to put them together again and put those all those fats together that they just made it with a protein into this ball called a chylomicron. And that chylomicron is like a nice easy way to transport the fats throughout the body. And this chylomicron is too big to get absorbed directly by the blood vessel. So it's going to travel instead through the lymphatic system. And if you watch my video on the circulatory system, you can you can learn about why we need lymph and the structure of the lymphatic system, but it's basically this, this other circulation that is going to filter into the blood eventually. So the chylomicron is going to go through the lymph and eventually enter the bloodstream through that avenue. And these lymphatic vessels that start in the, in the intestinal area, they are called lacteals. I also want to talk briefly about the hormones that are going to be involved with the digestive system. So there's one called gastrin, and gastrin works in a really weird way because it gets secreted by the stomach when food comes in and stretches the walls of the stomach. And then it will go through the entire circulation only to come back to the stomach and to signal it to make all those components that we talked about, the hydrochloric acid and the pepsinogen. There's also something called cholecystokinin, and cholecyst, that prefix means gallbladder. So we have gallbladder and kinin, that sounds like kinetic energy, right? It's movement. So this is going to cause the bile to move from the gallbladder into the small intestine and break down fats. There's also something called secretin, and secretin is going to stimulate the pancreas to release bicarbonate. And that's going to neutralize the acidic chyme that's coming from the stomach. Secretin and cholecystokinin can also um, inhibit activity in the stomach and slow down digestion because if you have a really big meal and you have a lot to break down in the small intestine, then you don't want everything to be coming in faster than you can break it down. The other two hormones that are important are insulin and glucagon, and those have to do with glucose homeostasis. I want to do a whole video on those because there is so much to talk about, so we, were, we will table them for now. And that is the digestive system.